Hey guys, and welcome back to Free Plugin Friday, where we look at plugins that you can use in your productions. Now, a lot of people come into Free Plugin Friday. I get a lot of views on certain videos, but only a small percentage of them end up subscribing, and only a small percentage of my viewers are subscribers. So I thank all the subscribers that come back and watch the videos, but also ask if you like the content, if you like the videos I put out, please hit that subscribe. It really helps also get new videos kind of seen and into the YouTube kind of universe so that other people can discover the videos. So what are we looking at today? We are looking at Chow Tape Model by Chow DSP. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, it's now version 2.7, I think, unless I've updated it. I downloaded this a little while ago. But yeah, it is a comprehensive tape machine. And while it can get your kind of subtle emulating a tape, it can also get ridiculous sounds. And we're going to really kind of look at them more. There's some really cool features in here. So let's just quickly go through the features. Then we're going to just put on a drum loop for a while and go through everything. Because I think drums really show what this can do. So we've got your kind of input gain section makes sense. You have low and high cut filters, really, really useful. This is kind of your input stage. Then you've got your tape stage where you've got saturation, you've got drive, and you've got bias. And this bias control is really cool for getting kind of different sounds. Then you've got like an EQ based in the tape section really um, called tone. Then over here is where things get really interesting. You have a loss section where you kind of pick what kind of tape it is and adjust the kind of model of the tape. Like you adjust the physical attributes of a tape machine, which is really, really cool. Then you've got degrade, which is basically LFO based degradation. And then you've got chew, which is similar and like chews up the tape. And then you've got wow and flutter. And what's really cool is you can also change the different mode for the hysterious based on different kind of um, algorithms there. And you have mixed groups. So if you want to put, you know, same settings on drums, same settings on vocals, that kind of thing. We'll briefly look at that. Um, we won't dive too much into it because otherwise this is going to be a three hour look at this plugin. You also have oversampling, which is always great for any distortion. We're going to leave it at two times. Um, but yeah, it goes all the way up to 16 times oversampling. Uh, so you can really make sure you don't have any aliasing distortion, especially when you start really abusing it. So let's put on drums. We're going to go, I'm going to reload the default. We will look at some presets too. Um, there's heaps of cool, weird presets. We won't Test them on drums. I think we're going to test them on bass or something just to see what happens. But anyway, let's just play some drums. And you got this cool little waveform thing here that I really like. That kind of shows what's going on. This is the default setting. If we bypass, it's a bit louder. So let's put that Apple game back up. So of course you got input and output gain. So now we're pushing the tape harder and you can hear what those kicks are doing to the tape. Getting a little bit of compression as well. Okay, let's look at the filters. I'm just gonna put them back to before. We'll put makeup gain on to make sure that Don't know what's going on there. I think we were just really driving the tape because I was using makeup gain. That's interesting. Adds the signal cut out by the cut filters back to the processing signal. Well, let's leave it off and just listen to low cut. What it might do is add it only to the tape. That would be interesting. I think that's what it's doing.
Anyway, interesting effect, really cool, but just having the filters there can be really cool for effects or different sources. If you want to add a little bit of kind of high cut to get a kind of fat tape sound. Okay, so let's have a look at the actual tape bit. Um, we'll leave bias for now and just have a look at the saturation. Oh, that's really going. Listen to that low end. Let's bring the output gain down a bit. Really crunching up that kick. Let's put it back to 50. What about drive? Different but similar effect. I'm guessing this is um, the distortion before the tape. It was to say, controls the amount of amplification Amplification done during the tape magnetization. So I'm guessing that's kind of how hot you print it to tape. It would be nice if it was gain compensated, but yeah, you can really get some hot sounding tape here, right? Cool, cool. So let's look at the bias. We're going to put these back to the other settings. So we bring the bias up. I think it'll get a bit cleaner. A bit brighter, maybe. As you bring it down, it starts to kind of break. Let's bring that drive up. Let's bring that saturation up so you can really hear it. Some real crazy distortion effects you can get here. Okay, back to the defaults. Let's have a look at this tone control. So I think this is to do with the, the filters. It says pre and post emphasis filters. So in tape, you have filters. I'll just pause it. Uh, so you have filters pre and post tape to kind of make it the most linear possible. So this is affecting those um, filters, I'm guessing. And this is the frequency, treble and bass. So let's boost them up, see what happens. Ah, so you can hear it really in that kick. You boost the bass up, the low end becomes really non-linear right there. It's starting to really distort. Dial it back, cleans that up a lot. And the same with the treble. So if we bring the saturation drive down a little bit, listen to the cymbals distort a lot more. That's really cool. Maybe we just want the really low end to not do it. So let's just really drive it. And you're gonna hear the effect. See how that kick just cleaned right up? Really cool to have, because that just really lets you tailor that distortion to the source, um, especially on modern productions. When we're talking older stuff, right, you have tape fairly non-linear um, by modern standards, but, you know, you set it up to be the least distortion you get overall across everything um, which works really well for rock and stuff for hip-hop and stuff where you've got 808 hits and sub drops where you got mu lots of low end you're probably going to distort most tape machines in the low end before anything else sees any of that tape distortion so to be able to control those pre and post um, filters is great to really tailor it to new kind of sources. Okay, so let's have a look at this section, the really interesting section. So uh, let's put take the tone off, put the tape back on. Let's um, more sensible settings again. OK, 
Okay, let's uh, choose different tape speeds. See what that does. We'll start with that. It's going to change the head bump. It's subtle, but you're gonna you're gonna hear it when you're using it on different sources. It's really where the head bump is, this kind of low end emphasis, and then you're gonna have different high end roll off. This isn't as as exaggerated as other plugins I've used though. Let's leave it on 30 ips and have a look at gap. So this is gonna dramatically make things sound weird, I reckon. Oh, it's getting really dark now. This sounds like an old tape recording. I, I've heard old tape recordings that just... They've just lost it. Making a huge difference to the high end there. Let's bring that back down to normal. Let's have a look at thickness. This is how thick the tape is. So thicker to the tape, less high end. Oh yeah, that rolls off a lot of high end there. So that crackling it's just happening because I think this is changing a lot of stuff on the back end. Um, it's basically only when you change the settings. Let's hit somewhere in the middle. Maybe with a bit bigger gap. Ah, see this, the thickness. Ah, I see now. So once you start adding some of that thickness, the tape speed really starts to come into its own. So let's have a look at the tape speeds again. And you really hear that high end completely change. Okay, and let's look at spacing. So spacing is between the tape and the playhead. Same again, it's gonna affect high end. So let's go back up to 30. So a lot of this is all just affecting high end, um, but in different ways, based on different physical things about tapes and tape machines. Ooh, that really does sound like a degraded tape machine, like not working. Oh, my dad has old recordings of his band and they sound like this with a bit more going on. I think with degrade, you'll probably get that effect. Remember, this is without these loss settings, still running tape, but without the loss settings. So dark, great for an effect though. So let's um, let's go to a little bit, I guess, more um, conservative settings. And have a look at degrade. Oh, that's definitely the amount. It's degraded. Depth is the depth whatever that means. And variance is variance, the great, great descriptions. Oh, that sounds like it. Okay, yeah. Let's add a little bit more loss. A bit more apple gain. I'm just going to drive it a bit more. It's 
Yeah, it really sounds like a completely destroyed tape. That's really cool. Um, so let's now go, uh, let's bring that loss back to there. Um, let's look at Chew. Oh, this could be great for some really cool effects. That just sounds like your tape's destroyed. So this whole section is really about breaking the tape. So we add a little bit of that, we add this back in. Put it to 7.5 ips, play it back slow. And you go from this. Normal drums. Someone threw up drums in my tape machine. That is awesome. I really like it. Of course, you're not going to use that on everything, but you can turn it off. But it's just, it's just really cool for those vintage effects. And if you really want to get some kind of, um, kind of nostalgia going on, you want a section in your song or maybe in a video, say, um, you're doing some kind of video work, some kind of sound effects or something, and you really want to give that kind of old tape broken, like someone just picked up the tape in an attic somewhere and put it on. With these controls, you can really invoke that. I really like it. Um, so we're going to turn it off for now. Um, at least, uh, let's keep loss on. Uh, bring it back up to 30 ips and let's have a look at Wow and Flutter. Now they've been on, but the debt's been at zero. So let's bring that input game back. Let's look at Flutter. Oh, that's a cool little diagram. Death back down. So it doesn't go too crazy, which I like, um, because as much as I want to make it crazy, I kind of want to be able to control it and be realistic. Some plugins, it's just like a ridiculous LFO, and you're like, well, no tape machine has that much variance. Like, the motor would burn out with that much variance. It doesn't make any sense. So let's add a little bit. Uh, let's turn off Flutter. Let's have a look at Wow. Oh, yeah. So what's the rate go like from really slow? Almost not moving. To like alien sounds, that's cool. So we put that here. The flutter to about there. Degrade. Bit of chew. Play it to a slow machine. We've created something completely different. Okay, so enough drums. What I really want to do is we're going to look at some presets on bass first and then explore some of the kind of dry, wet stuff. So I'm going to turn it off on the drums. Uh, we're going to head over to the bass. I'm going to turn Micro Shift off. I have Micro Shift on on the bass um, because I want this to kind of do the modulation, you know, as a kind of tape modulator. So... Start off with the Sony tape that's modeled on, just to see what the tape's like on uh, bass. So we're going to crank the input up a little bit. Fans on the bass. Just give it a bit more edge too. Okay, but let's go to Woozy Chorus.
So this is obviously a blue abusing the uh, wow flutter. Okay, let's go to the sink here, and you've got bass push up. That's like a sub frequency thing going on. Let's just get the end section of the bass because that's the kind of exciting little riff bit. It's almost like an octave down, that's really cool. What about chorus? Feel like it's in definitely. Is that mono? I don't think it is, but this sounds cool. It's giving a very eighties vibe. That's really cool. Just blending it in like that. Okay, I do want to try it on some vocals. Oh. I don't know why I'm just an animal. Let's go for a fat I'm vocal sound first. Make me see. I'm just an animal. I'm just an animal. I don't know why I'm just an animal. I'm just an animal, make me see. I'm just an animal, I'm just an animal. I don't know why I'm just an animal. I'm just an animal, make me see. I'm just an animal, I'm just an animal. I don't know why. And let's blend that in. I'm just an animal. I'm just an animal. Now we've got some chorusing. Me see. Got some thickening, that's cool. I'm just an animal. I'm just an animal. I don't know why. I'm just an animal. I'm just an animal. Make me see. I'm just an animal. I'm just an animal. Okay, last thing, we'll just quickly look at the mix group. So what I'm going to do is turn it off here and we'll just add it to some of these guitar tracks. Um, let's see, what have we got? Uh, we'll go to a separate section, I think, that has a lot more guitar tracks. So now I have it on all the guitars. So we've got solo, we've got rhythm guitars, and we have lead guitars. Um, so what you're going to hear is, and what you're going to see, is as I turn a knob, it does it on all of them. So if you set these mix groups up like this, it just means like, say, all your drums you want together, all your guitars, like I've done here, any change to one is going to affect all of them. And so they're kind of glued together like you would with a real multi-track tape machine, which is really cool. So let's just abuse it a little bit on guitars and see what we can do. Thanks, sure 
to loop it. Now, the only thing is there's no global bypass, which is annoying. Because if I want to bypass all of these groups together, I can't. Okay, this is new in the mix. Ridiculous sound. To get the idea, you can adjust all of the separate instances together. So, the only thing we didn't look at is hysteris mode. Um, hyst hysteresis. I always mispronounce that word. Um, it's all going to be different kind of ways they do that in the plugin. Um, it's going to be a, a subtle thing, so. Probably not going to go through it, but it's really cool to have just another option. Um, and having presets is great because obviously with this many options, you can easily get option paralysis and just give up. So awesome plugin. I mean, I like the sound of it as well. Um, but more importantly than the sound in a way is how you can affect the sound, being able to tailor it. It's the opposite of Slate VTM where I kind of pick from a few options, put it on everything and it sounds like a tape machine. Where this is like I abuse the hell out of it to get a Frankenstein tape machine, to get some broken tape or just to get that kind of normal tape. Um, the fact that this is just you just hop over there and download it for such... A detailed plugin is insane to me. And teenage me would be like just losing his shit at this. I'm losing my shit now at 31. So go grab Chow Tape Model. I know this has been a long review, but with the amount of controls on this and the amount of things you can do, you really need to dive into it. If you want me to possibly do a mix with some free plugins, let me know. I've been thinking for a while, a lot of these kind of things, I put it on a source, show it on a source, and kind of show the features because that's really what you want to know. But I don't really show like a real world, here's a mix where I do it. So let me know in the comments below. And what I might consider doing is getting a song, doing a mix with some select plugins. Um, all doing different tasks and then go through the mix. I might even do the actual mix on Twitch as a live thing because I sometimes stream on Twitch. I haven't done it in several months, but I'm going to get back into it over summer, um, summer in Australia, and mix it. And then we can have a look at what I did and what all the plugins are doing to give a bit more of a kind of, I guess, realistic use. So let me know. Please like this video and subscribe if you're not subscribed and I will see you next time. Uh...